say you get raped, all right? How is aborting the baby that came about because of that terrible situation going to make it any better? An abortion, I've got news for you, does not magically undo that rape. You are still a rape victim, but on top of it, you've now killed your baby. So congrats, I guess. You've now taken a bad situation and made it worse. So congrats, I guess. I really, I just don't get it. I do not get the argument. So I know, I know not all of you are going to agree with me here, but hear me out because, uh, by the way, for the pro-aborts, this is not, this is not the episode for you. You're not going to agree with me, but I don't know anyone, hear hear me out on this argument. I do not know anyone who is pro-life whose opposition to abortion is a pragmatic one. No, it's a moral argument. It is a moral one. And if your opposition to abortion is based on the fact that all life is sacred, then why is life that came about by means of a terrible, awful situation any different? Do do you think in the womb that the baby, when it's trying to avoid the scissors to save its own life, shouldn't get to keep that life because the mother was impregnated in a a less than ideal way? No. If your argument is one in favor of life, it should apply to all life, not just the ones that were created in the perfect situation. And even ones that are created in terrible situations, they still have the right to life. And so that is what this abortion bill in Alabama attempts to do. Give all lives the right to live. But before we get into it, I want to talk about our sponsor, who today is FreedomWorks. You don't need to tell me that socialized medicine doesn't work. I should say we don't need to tell you that socialized medicine doesn't work. Because everything about Obamacare was an abysmal failure. It's also not a secret that for many, prescription drug prices are unaffordable. They're going up. So let's learn from the mistakes of Obamacare and keep the sweeping hand of government out of the drug market. Right now, the HHS Secretary, Alex Azar, is considering implementing price controls on prescription drugs. Doing this will lead to shortages of vital medicines and set medical research back decades, making it harder for researchers to find cures for horrible diseases like diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cancer. Now, I didn't sign up for foreign governments meddling in my health care. Did you? Don't think so. Thankfully, FreedomWorks is doing everything they can to sound the alarm and persuade HHS Secretary Alex Azar that more government intervention is not the answer to runaway drug prices, but they cannot do it by themselves and they need your help. That is why I'm asking you to go to freedomworks.org slash Miller and tell Secretary Azar to fix patients, not prices, because make no mistake about it, tying the prices of your medicine to other countries does not put America first. It will leave countless Americans to die while they wait for treatments that may never be discovered. And the Trump administration, they are doing a great job repealing costly regulations at an amazing rate. So let's make sure Alex Azar's department does the same. We've got to fight this with everything we have, and it's going to take every single person watching right now to do it. Go to freedomworks.org slash Miller and tell Secretary Azar to put America first and fix patients, not prices. That's freedomworks.org slash Miller. Go there right now and take action today. Freedomworks.org slash Miller. All right. So this Alabama abortion bill that everyone's talking about is, has the left in a tizzy. Oh, strictest abortion restrictions ever. You mad, bro? The bill, if it becomes law, would only allow abortions if the life of the woman was threatened, if the woman had a mental illness that could result in her death or the death of her unborn child, or if the fetus had a fatal anomaly that would result in stillbirth or death after birth. So in other words, if the baby's life is in danger or the mother's life is in danger, you can have an abortion, all right? If someone's going to die anyway, be it the mother or the fetus, and you have to choose the mother's life, That is the only circumstance under which you can get an abortion. That's it. And that's quite honestly what any piece of pro-life legislation should look like. I mean, how are you going to call yourself? How are you going to call yourself pro-life, but only sometimes? Only sometimes I'm pro-life. That's called being pro-choice, bro. This bill makes it a felony punishable by life for 10 to 99 years in prison to perform an abortion in the state of Alabama. And it is being sponsored by... Republican Alabama State Representative Terry Collins was written by the Alabama Pro-Life Coalition and intentionally goes against Roe versus Wade because they want it to go up to the Supremes so that Roe v. Wade can be challenged. Finally. Now, Roe v. Wade, by the way, Roe v. Wade actually makes no sense when you think about it. It never did. I mean, you know how you keep hearing abortion is a constitutional right because of privacy? Like, what? Did people in robes really come up with that profundity, that genius profundity? 
I mean, remember, remember when you were learning about this in high school and it like never really made any sense and you're like, uh, teacher, I don't get it. Like what, a woman's right to privacy allows her the right to kill her baby? I mean, I don't know, if I kill my ex and I don't tell anybody about it, is that legal because of my constitutional right to privacy? Well, if you didn't get it then and you don't get it now, it's not because you're stupid, it's because the decision is stupid. The people who wrote the decision, however, are not. Because for the last several decades, we've been catering to their ridiculous argument as a reason for why we cannot fight for life because it's a privacy issue. I mean, it's actually genius on their part what they've done because we've all caved to them on this. The arguments against abortion are all actually hysterically bereft of any logic when you think about them, all the way from the Supreme Court down to the Alabama legislature where this is happening, where the best argument they could come up with for why this bill is terrible is this. You just aborted the state of Alabama with your rhetoric with this bill. That, that is the best argument that Alabama State Senator Bobby Singleton could come up with. And these are the people we're trying to persuade by like moderating our position on this because we've always had to moderate our views on this. And if you want to be a Republican and run for office, you have to say, I am pro-life except for the cases of rape and incest. And it's always been understood that, that that's just what you have to say because we got to appease the moderates and the left who are secretly snickering that they got away with arguing that a woman's right to privacy allows her the right to kill her baby. I mean, these are the people we're trying to appease, really. But you know what? When you've got the left, when you've got the people on the other side taken off their gloves and they're now fully out, fully out there saying, we are not even in favor of keeping the baby outside of the womb then you know what? We're going to take off our gloves as well and show them who we really are and what our real position on this is, which is not that we are in favor of it, except in the cases of rape and incest. We are in favor of life always, and especially the most innocent life you can get no matter what, always. And we will fight as hard as the left does to make sure that their barbaric practice ends. I'm over, I'm, frankly, I'm over. I'm over the pro-light arguments. Because I've got news for you. If you are in favor of keeping the life most of the time, you are not pro-life. And we've got people like Guy Benson out there saying, I am pro-life. Mm, not sure about that guy. But this bill goes too far. I'll also say this is it's, it's the opposite equivalent of the radical late-term abortion laws being proposed and passed in various states. These laws are all far outside the mainstream, which favors significant new restrictions, but not blanket bans. Well, if you think that saving lives and protecting innocent life is outside the mainstream, that just shows how far off the cliff society has gone. I mean, sorry, but if you think the circumstances of which that life came about should dictate whether that child gets to keep its life, you're not pro-life. You're just not. If you don't want to keep your baby because maybe it's the product of incest, and I don't know, you, your child might end up with a big old Habsburg jaw. If you think that's the reason you should kill your child, you're not pro-life. I mean, really, there are, there are worse things than having an underbite. Like, I don't know, dying? I mean, what, what? Would you rather have the jaw or be killed if you're in the womb? If I'm the baby in the womb, you know what? I'll take the jaw. Oh, I, I might have an extra toe. Just kill me, Mom. Just kill me. Stick the scissors through my stomach. I don't want to live in this world anymore if it means I'm going to have a toe or a big jaw. I mean, if the argument is that you shouldn't abort a baby even with genetic disorders because their lives matter too, because that's the conservative argument, then why should genetic disorders as a result of incest make those lives matter any less? No, the argument should be a life is a life is a life. And by saying that it's a life is a life, but that one's not a life because it's an incest child, it's an inconsistent moral argument. All right, that's all I'm saying. It's not consistent. And, and what if the baby grows up to cure cancer? What if the baby grows up to be the loving mother of two more kids, of two more beautiful kids? Is that, you're gonna snuff it out then? Because it was an incest product? Besides, rape and incest, we're, they have us talking about rape and incest. They are a minority of the cases. The vast majority of abortion cases are not rape and incest. E even the Guttmacher Institute, this is Planned Parenthood's research arm. Even they will tell you that only 1% 
of abortions are because of rape. And you might say, well, no, look at that study. That was back in 2004, blah, blah, blah. That was still the case way back in 1987. It probably still is now. It was only 1%. But the real point is it is the vast minority of instances. Rape and incest are a minority of the cases we're talking about. But guess what? Even their lives matter. Believe it or not, I know it's weird. But even their lives matter. I know it's a strange concept. Now, you're entitled to your opinion if you don't agree with me. All right, you're entitled to it. Just don't preface it by saying I'm pro-life. All right, because you're not. I mean, why don't we? Why, why, why don't we stop? Talk, why, why don't we start talking about stopping rape with the great equalizer? Oh, you mean a gun? No. All of a sudden, liberals are no longer interested in female empowerment. It's only come when it comes down to shredding their children to pieces in the womb that they're all like, you know what? We need to be empowered. Girl power. Spice up your life. I mean, this is not about women's empowerment for them. It just isn't. It's not an argument that's being made in good faith. Otherwise, they'd have better legal arguments against it, aside from privacy. I mean, the fact, that, the, the, the fact of the matter is, this is actually not about the mom at all. This is not about her. This is about the baby that was created by two people. And this is about making the world a better place by not being okay with killing babies just because they weren't conceived under your little perfect circumstances.